Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. Hey guys, it's Big Paul and I am here today to talk about my experience with sleep apnea in the process of getting a CPAP machine, we're going to talk about the side effects of sleep apnea, whether or not you need a CPAP machine. I'm going to tell you about the nutty process that I had to go through to get one and what a pain in the ass it was. Um, I, those of you that have watched my channel have heard me complain about it multiple times, but I finally got one. I have been using it for, I don't know, two and a half, three months now. I think it's been about three months, but I'm going to go through the process of getting one side effects, what my experience has been like, and we're going to talk about all that in just one second. All right, so we are going to first talk about the symptoms of sleep apnea. Some of them are pretty obvious, and you know if you have it. So if you're snoring at night, you're choking, your girlfriend tells you, my God, dude, you stopped breathing like in the middle of the night, and I saw you choking, gasping for breath, you definitely have sleep apnea. Now, there are some other subtler side effects that guys miss, and a lot of times they will say, eh, it's not a big deal if I snore and make a bunch of noise at night, whatever. I'm not fooling with that stupid CPAP machine. And I'm going to talk about these side effects and they're common things that bodybuilders experience and you're probably ignoring. And some of them, you might not relate to the sleep apnea, but they are certainly a symptom of sleep apnea. So first and foremost, the one that I have seen is high hematocrit. A lot of people get really high hematocrit from taking PEDs. Sleep apnea can further elevate your hematocrit on top of what the PEDs are doing. So if you see guys that have super high hematocrit, you know, 54, 55, 56%, that is not what I normally see from the PEDs. No, normally it's like somewhere between 51, 52. That's, that's the kind of elevated hematocrit that I'll see from. Now, if it gets much up above that, it is probably from sleep apnea, probably undiagnosed sleep apnea. Another thing that guys overlook, another symptom of untreated and undiagnosed sleep apnea is high blood pressure that does not come down with the use of a blood pressure medicine. I've seen guys sometimes that will take blood pressure medicines and their blood pressure will not come down and it is a lot of times it is related to sleep apnea and oxygen deprivation at night. Uh, another side effect that a lot of guys experience is the tiredness during the day or just lack of focus, lethargy, lethargy during the day and it is often from the oxygen debt created from basically choking and stopping breathing at night. I kind of got OCD after I had the C word a few years ago about tracking my oxygen levels and they're they were consistently low and I just assumed that it was some sort of post COVID symptom. They were 95, 96. And I know this is not a big change, but when I started using the CPAP machine, they went up to like 98, 99%. It definitely changed. I also noticed that my blood pressure came down probably about 10 points on both the systolic and diastolic readings. It was a pretty significant drop in my blood pressure after starting the CPAP machine. And I also, I noticed that um, I wasn't getting tired during the day. There were a lot of days where, you know, one, two in the afternoon, I, I would just be falling over at my desk. I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. I needed to lay down for 30 minutes and take a nap. Um, and constantly waking up at night, I make it through the entire night. I, I thought it was just me having to pee during the night, but I was constantly having to wake up during the night to go pee, but I don't think it was really having to pee. I was just choking and then I would wake up and go pee out of habit. So now that I've been using the CPAP machine, I can sleep through the entire night without getting up, which is pretty 
miraculous. I haven't done that in years. Now, getting this piece of crap was, oh my God, the process I had to go through was incredibly frustrating. I had a prescription for one, I don't know, years ago. I went to my doctor. I tried it. I hated it. I couldn't couldn't sleep with it. It just, it just bothered the crap out of me. So I think I gave it to somebody years ago and I just never bothered with using it again. So I decided it was time to be proactive with more proactive with my health and get a new CPAP machine. So I went back to my doctor and I said, Hey dude, I would like to get another one. Can you, can you write me a prescription for it? He wouldn't write me a new prescription unless I went to the hospital and did these over, this stupid overnight sleep study. I am going to rant here for a second. I just do not understand why you have to pay a doctor and get a medical prescription for a device to help you breathe at night. It's not like it's a drug or something. It's not like I'm going to take this damn thing and fall over dead. So, I, I mean, I get having a wall up for certain drugs. I mean, I that that makes sense. But to buy a goddamn CPAP machine, that it seems utterly ridiculous to me that you have to go through your doctor, do a sleep study, get a CPAP machine. To me, it's just an artificial paywall. It is, it is really, really ridiculous. And I was about ready to give up. And then I stumbled into the people at Second Wind CPAP which I think uh, came as a recommendation from Chase Irons, if I recall correctly. Somebody passed that on to me from Chase. So thank you, Chase, for that one. And I connected with them, and they uh, have a home sleep study that you can do. You don't even need to leave your, leave your house. And they send you a machine, you plug it up, and it analyzes your sleep patterns, and then you send it back to them, and they write your prescription. And holy crap, man, my sleep was awful. I think I, I think it said I stopped breathing something like 30 times. and I don't know. I don't remember the exact number, but it was a ridiculous amount of times I stopped uh, breathing at night. So got that in. Uh, once, the, once I mailed the device back to them, they got the results, and then they sent me, or I ordered a ResMed 10, I think it was, a Res ResMed 10 machine. I got that machine sent to me. I think it was around, the used one was around 800 bucks, something like that. I got the auto one. You do not want the ones that have to be programmed by the doctor. Do not get those. You want the one that has the algorithm in it to automatically detect your sleeping pattern, patterns and it, and it adjusts without the input from a doctor setting the pressure to make sure that you breathe at night. That was uh, that was the machine that I got. I think it was the ResMed 10, and you know, here's the mask. If you want to see, I got a full face mask. Um, it, I think the mask was like 180 bucks. I got an expensive mask. It was one that became recommended to me. Some people get the over the nose mask. I can't do that one because I have a deviated septum. I, I know some people have commented on it. it. Sounds like I have a hard time catching my breath sometimes when I'm on my videos, it's because I'm a mouth breather. I can't really breathe through my nose. I need to go get this deviated septum fixed at some point. I need surgery on it. So if you hear me taking breaths through my mouth, it's because I'm, I'm a mouth breather. I can't really breathe through my nose that well. Yeah, I got the full face mask. Um, and it is the, it is a ResMed mask as well. I don't know if you can see that, but I got the full face mask. And I will tell you the first month of using this thing sucked. <laughs> it was awful. When I got it, I could not sleep through the night. Oh my God. I, I was, you know, it was so uncomfortable and so weird sleeping with this damn thing on my face at first. And I, it, I, I was really, really ready to give up after the first week. I couldn't even fall asleep with it on. Then, then I got to the point where I could fall asleep with it on. But at some point in the night, I would just rip it off. And not even realize that I ripped it off. I would just pull it off on my face. And it took me a good solid month to get used to sleeping with this thing. Once I got in a groove, oh my God. Now, if I sleep without it, sometimes I'll go to my girlfriend's house and I, you know, I just don't bring it with me when I go there. I sleep like shit. I wake up multiple times during the night. I don't feel rested the next day. It completely transformed how I feel during the day, I have way more energy during the day. I feel better when I lift. I speculate that most people that lift weights, most people that are bodybuilders need a CPAP machine. The thickening of the neck, from what I understand, impacts the airway. And as you 
get bigger if you're a larger human being it, your airway is obstructed when you sleep and then a lot of bodybuilders powerlifters strength athletes end up with sleep apnea and most of them uh it's untreated so and when you think about it what kills bodybuilders is cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular related related events and from what I understand, when you use a CPAP machine, you are definitely lowering the risk of cardiovascular events. You know, if you think about it, if you're lowering your hematocrit, you're increasing oxygenation of your blood. If you're lowering your blood pressure, that alone will decrease the risk of a cardiovascular event. So part of your health protocol for a for bodybuilding, if you're serious about bodybuilding, you know, there's other things, you know, keeping track of your blood pressure, making sure your glucose is under control, managing your blood pressure. But I would say this is a valuable tool to have in your toolbox to manage your long-term health. And it's not one that people think about. I know a lot more people are using CPAP machines now, but I think this is an important one to consider for you guys. All right, guys, if you have questions, comments, you want to share your experiences about your CPAP machine and your sleep apnea, put them in the comment section below. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.